or you are math genius, let's see if you can solve this equation in less than 2 minutes. Greetings again everyone, welcome back to my channel. Here we have another algebraic exponential equation that we're going to solve. In this equation we have 8 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x is equal to 36 and we're given to find the value of x. Now before we dive into the solution, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. Now we start to solve our equation by simplifying the values of 8 and 4. And we can simplify 8 as 2 cubes is equal to 8 and we simplify 4 as 2 squares is equal to 4. This means that we can rewrite our equation as 2 cubes in brackets powered by x plus 2 squared in brackets also powered by x is equal to 36. And doing this from here we can look at this algebraic rule where we have 8 to the power of m powered by n is the same as saying a to the power of m times n. And since multiplication is commutative, it means no matter what order we write m or n, it's just the same. So this means that we can write 2 to the power of x powered by 3 plus 2 to the power of x again powered by 2 is equal to 36. Now since we have 2 to the power of x common in both brackets, it means that we can simplify our equation a bit further. So we say let 2 to the power of x is equal to y. No, this is very key and please remember this as we go further into solving our equation. So now from here on forward we say y cubed plus y squared is equal to 36. Now this 36 we are going to bring it over which is going to become a negative. So that's going to be y cubed plus y squared minus 36 is equal to 0. We now simplify further by taking 36 and break it down. So we have negative 27 minus 9, which is the same as negative 36. Then we come again and say y cubed plus y squared, and then we take negative 27 and we also take negative 9. But there's something very interesting. We know that 27 is 3 cubes and 9 is also 3 squared. This means that we can rewrite our equation as follows. So we take y cubed, so we have y cubed, and we group by having y cubed minus 3 cubed so we have that and then we do the same here by saying y squared so we take positive y squared and we group that with negative 3 squared so we have that and of course this is all equal to 0. Now pay attention to what we have here. What we're looking at here is what we call the difference of 2 cubes and here we have a difference of 2 squares. Now let's recall from what we learned in our algebra class where we have the difference of 2 cubes and the difference of 2 squares. For the difference of two cubes, we expand that by saying a minus b in one pair of brackets and in another pair of brackets, we have a squared plus ab plus b squared. And for the difference of two squares where we have a squared minus b squared, so we express this by saying a plus b in one pair of brackets and in the other pair, we have a minus b. So we are going to rewrite our equation using these rules. So we are going with the difference of two cubes and we say a minus b, so we have y minus 3. Then in another pair of brackets, we have y squared plus 3y plus 3 squared. And now to expand our difference of two squares for y squared minus 3 squared, so we will therefore have y plus 3 in one pair of brackets and in the other pair, we have y minus 3. And as we know, our equation is still equal to 0. Now from here, we factor out y minus 3. So in factoring out y minus 3, we'll have y plus 3 inside of our brackets. So we will have y minus 3 in one pair of brackets and in the other pair we have y squared plus 3y. And we know that 3 squared is going to give us 9. So we have y squared plus 3y plus 9. And then we also take in consideration our y plus 3. So we have plus y plus 3 and we close that bracket. And of course our equation is still equal to 0. And with that, we apply our zero property rule where it states that if two expressions multiply together to give us zero, either one of them is equal to zero or both are equal to zero. So in this case, we have y minus 3 is equal to zero and we have y squared plus 4y plus 12 is equal to zero. And so therefore, to solve for y, we add 3 on both sides of this equation. So therefore, we have y is equal to 3 and this is what we call a real solution. Now keep in mind this solution, but this is not the final solution. We'll be using this solution later on in our video. Now let us look at this trinomial expression where a is equal to 1, b is equal to 4, and our number term which is c is equal to 12. Now using these values for a, b, and c, we can now apply these in what we call our quadratic formula where we have y is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. 
So then in plugging in our values for A, B and C respectively, we have minus in brackets 4 plus or minus the square root of B squared. So that's 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 12 all over 2 times 1. And now in bringing that together, we have negative 4 plus or minus the square root of not 4 squared, it gives us 16. So that's 16 minus 4 times 1 times 12 is 48. So that's 16 minus 48 and we know that 2 times 1 is 2. So we have that over 2. Now from here, we break this down further by saying y is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 48 gives us negative 32 and we have all of this divided by 2. Now let's break this down a bit further so we have negative 4 plus or minus the square root of we can take negative 32 and we express that as negative 2 to the power 4 times 2 and of course we are still dividing all of this by 2. Now we can simplify this further by removing this negative from here. So we have y is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 2 to the power 4 times 2 times negative 1. And yes, we are still dividing by 2. So from here in writing this a bit further, we have y is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 2 to the power 4 times the square root of 2 times the square root of negative 1. Now the square root of negative 1 is our imaginary number and we represent this by the letter i. So i represents the square root of negative 1. And with that being said, we will therefore have y is equal to negative 4 plus or minus. We know that the square root of 2 to the power of 4 is the same as 2 squared and we know that 2 squared is equal to 4. So we have negative 4 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 2 times the square root of i and of course we're still dividing by 2. Now from here simplifying this we're simply saying that y is equal to negative 4 over 2 plus or minus 4 root 2 i and dividing both by 2 will therefore have negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 2 i. So therefore in this situation we have y is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 2 i and so this is our solution for y for our quadratic equation but this solution is referred to as a complex solution as i is an imaginary number and there are no two numbers that multiply together to give you negative one or any other negative number for that matter so from here we'll be using our real solution to find the value of x now remember that we established what we have as our real solution. We said that y is equal to 3. And from here, let's recall that we said that let 2 to the power of x equal y. Now this piece of information becomes very applicable as we are about to solve the value of x. Now since we know that 3 is also equal to 2 to the power of x, we then therefore solve x by using our logarithm rule. So we say log 2 to the power of x is equal to the log of 3. And then from here we apply this logarithm rule where we said that log x to the power of y is the same as saying y the log of x. And now with this understanding we can rewrite our equation as follows. So we said that x log 2 is equal to log 3. And then we divide both sides of this equation by the log of 2. And so we have x is equal to log 3 over log 2 as log 2 over log 2 cancels each other. So therefore x is equal to log 3 over log 2. And in simplifying our solution for x, we use this logarithm rule where we have log a over log b is the same as saying log base b of a. Now with this rule, we therefore simplify our value of x as follows. So since x is equal to log 3 over log 2, we therefore say that x is equal to log base 2 of 3. And this is our solution for the value of x in our equation. Now I'm sure you will appreciate if we see how this fits into our equation. So from here we'll be verifying that our solution of x is that x is equal to log base 2 of 3. So in verifying our solution for x we'll be using our original equation where we have 8 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x is equal to 36. We also said that we could simplify our values of 8 and 4 by having 2 to the power of 3 raised to the power of x plus 2 squared raised to the power of x is equal to 36. 
and since we know the value of x we therefore can rewrite our equation writing out the value of x so we say 2 cubed raised to the power of the value of x which is log base 2 of 3 and we have that then we say plus 2 squared raised to the power of, of x which is log base 2 of 3 and of course all of this is equal to 36. Now from here let's revisit one of our exponential rules. So we'll be using this rule to simplify our equation. Now where we have a to the power of m in brackets raised to the power of n, we said before that that is the same as saying a to the power of m times n. So with this understanding we rewrite our equation as follows. So we say 2 to the power of 3 times log base 2 of 3 plus 2 to the power of 2 times log base 2 of 3 is equal to 36. And with this we can now look at another logarithm rule to simplify our equation. So where we have y times log x, this expression can be rewritten as log x raised to the power of y. So now looking at our rule, we see that anything that is in front of log x, we can put it as the index of x. This means that we raise log base 2 of 3 with what server is in front of the log. So we therefore say 2 to the power of log base 2 of 3 raised to the power of 3 plus 2 to the power of log base 2 of 3 raised to the power of 2 is equal to 36. And now from here we can rewrite our equation by simplifying what we have here. So we say that 2 to the power of log base 2, we know that 3 cubes is 27, so that's 2 to the power of log base 2 of 27, plus 2 to the power of log base 2, we know that 3 squared is 9, so we say 2 to the power of log base 2 of 9 is equal to 36. And now with that, we can now verify our solution for x by applying this logarithm rule. Where we have x to the power of log base x of y, where x is in the base and also in the base of the exponent, where our result is just the y. So now we can apply this rule where we see 2 in the base and also in the base of the exponent. Our result is 27. So we say 27 plus, and here we see the same again, so our result is 9. So now we have 27 plus 9. And is that equal to 36? Let's find out. 27 plus 9 is indeed equal to 36. And so there we have it. Our solution is verified. X is therefore equal to log base 2 of 3. Now thanks again for staying tuned to the end of this lesson. I hope that this was very informative. Please remember to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for more math videos like these ones. Also remember to check out my Math Olympiad playlist to see how to solve similar equations as these ones. So hopefully I will see you again soon. Until then, take care.